Today I'm going to show you how to VPN any device on your home network. Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. First off, let's talk about why you would want to connect to a VPN. Well, first and foremost, privacy. Virtually anything you do online from your home network, your internet service provider can see, whether it's just collecting analytics on you or if they want to actually sell that data to third-party advertisers. Even if the sites you're visiting are encrypted through HTTPS, your internet service provider still knows you visited that website. The other big thing I'm going to address today is geolocation. Let's say I'm a Blazers fan and I live in Oregon and I would like to watch my local team on my TV or other personal devices. Well, tough cookies, because Comcast has a contract with the Blazers that only they and other regional cable TV providers are allowed to broadcast the Blazer games. That means no satellite and no internet streaming, even if you have NBA League Pass. Your IP address inside of Oregon will block you from being able to watch Blazer games. And yeah, this happens a lot around the country in a lot of different sports markets, and it's kind of crappy. But while you're saying, well, Jeff, the easiest thing to do in that case is just connect your device to a VPN. And that's exactly what we're going to do today, but we're going to do it for any device that's in your house. And I'm not just talking about devices that are supported by your VPN provider, be it a desktop computer or laptop or cell phone. I'm talking about everything from your smart fridge to your set-top boxes like a Roku or an Apple TV. We're gonna be setting up a VPN gateway that any device in your home network can connect to. So let's get started. I'm gonna be building my VPN gateway today inside of Proxmox, the virtualization OS that I built a couple of weeks ago. But the nice thing about this tutorial is you can use any operating system you'd like and pretty much any hardware you'd like, whether it's an old desktop computer, a virtualization server, or even a Raspberry Pi. The first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new VM, and I'm going to name it VPN Tutorial. I'm going to be using Ubuntu 18.04 Server for this build, but you can use, again, pretty much any Linux distro you'd like, although the instructions might be a little bit different. Under hard disk, it doesn't need a lot for hard disk, so I'm just going to allocate 12 gigabytes. For CPU, I'm going to give it four cores because I've got plenty of cores in the system, but you can give it whatever you need. Uh, I would recommend at least two, though. For RAM, again, it doesn't need a lot of RAM, so I'm just going to give it a max of 2048 megabytes, and I'm going to do a minimum of 512. Networking-wise, you only need one virtual NIC, so we're already set there. Let's hit Next, and then Confirm. Then we'll select our virtual machine, and we'll hit Start. The installation process for Ubuntu is pretty straightforward. You really don't need to do anything special here. Just install Ubuntu, make sure you use the entire drive, uh, set up any proxy server you might have, which is kind of rare in a home network, and uh, set up a password. Now that the installation is complete, we'll go ahead and log in using the credentials I set up during the install. And best practice is always to do a sudo apt-get update and then a sudo apt-get upgrade to make sure all of our packages are up to date. By the way, I will have a link for written instructions down in the video description so you can follow along. And actually, there's going to be a lot of copy and paste in this tutorial as well. So grab those files down below. I'm sure watching me watch this update is uh, riveting YouTube. Now that the update process is done, there's a couple more things I need to do before we get into the nitty gritty of this tutorial. First off, I'm gonna set up a static IP address and then install a couple of the required packages. To set a static IP address, we're going to go sudo nano slash etc slash netplan slash 50, and then go ahead and hit tab and it'll autocomplete the uh, full file name for the YAML file. And inside of this configuration file is where we set up a static IP address. So right here under addresses, we're going to type in your local static IP address. And in my case, that's 10.0.1.15. And then you need to define a subnet mask. And in my case, it's a forward slash and a 24. Slash 24 is going to be most home networks. We're going to add another line right here. Now in a YAML file, uh, you cannot use tabs, even though you're going to be tempted to do so. Uh, you need to use spaces, and it's pretty much four spaces per line. So now we're going to add a gateway address, and that's gateway for an IPv4 gateway. And this IP address is not in brackets. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it is. Uh, in my case, my gateway is 10.0.1.1. We do need to define some DNS name servers as well. So we're gonna go back up to that line and type in name servers with a colon, and then we're gonna add a new line and then one, two, three, four spaces in front of it. We're gonna type addresses, colon. This one is in brackets and I'm gonna use Cloudflare for my DNS servers for this server. So that's 1.1.1.1, comma, 1.0.0.1 in the bracket. Last thing to do is under DHCP4, we don't need DHCP, so we're going to set that as false. Ah. Helps if you spell everything right. <laughs> there we go. Addresses has two Ds. 
Okay, control X and then yes to save and then enter for the name. And then we're gonna type in sudo netplan apply. And then just to verify that we got everything right, go ahead and ping google.com. If it pings, you're all set. Next up, we're gonna install the few packages we need to actually run OpenVPN as a service. So we're gonna type in sudo apt-git install openvpn open ssh server and unzip. Once that install is done, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the server and then we're gonna SSH into it so we can actually copy and paste all the configuration files that we need. So we're gonna do sudo reboot. Now at this point, we can go ahead and close our web browser window and I'm gonna open up PuTTY, which is a free download and it's an SSH client that you can use to remotely access your server. A link to install PuTTY will be down in the video description and I highly recommend this as a client. When you launch PuTTY, this is the uh, window you're met with and this is the default window, so SSH connection. We're gonna connect to 10.0.1.15 or whatever static IP address you entered earlier. Press enter. You're gonna get a warning about uh, this being an unknown host. Just click yes, because you probably haven't connected to this host before. Log in with your credentials. And now we're all set. This window can also be resized to meet your needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring this down a little bit. And then we're gonna open our tutorial on this side of things. So this right here is the PDF that I'm likely going to link in the video description. Although if you're not able to copy and paste from the PDF, I'll probably have another uh, file linked there. But uh, this is all the instructions and scripts that you're gonna need to copy and paste into your SSH session to get this all working. We're gonna start out by navigating to the OpenVPN directory. So CD, ETC, and then OpenVPN. This is where 90% of our script files are going to go. I'm gonna start out by getting the OpenVPN configuration files from NordVPN. Now I'm using NordVPN, but you can use any VPN provider that supports OpenVPN configuration and connections. I'm gonna just copy that, paste it into here, and download it. Next, I'm gonna unzip that file. So sudo unzip ovpn, and that inflates all of the TCP and UDP files inside of a subdirectory inside of our OpenVPN directory. There are three files that I need to create inside of here. We're gonna start with the connection script. So that's sudo nano connect.sh. And we're gonna copy this line of code right here. To paste text inside of PuTTY, just right click and uh, the text will appear. Now there is one thing you have to modify and that is this line right here, just the country code and then the four digit server number that you're gonna to connect to. Now in my case, I'm gonna just be a US base. So I'm gonna do US and then the UDP server that I had the most luck with is 2525 and that's down in Phoenix, Arizona. But you're gonna to need to really uh, do a lot of trial and error to find out which server is fastest for you and which one makes the most sense for you. You can also mix this up at any time just by changing this one line right here. For example, if I wanted to watch BBC content and pretend I was in the UK, I would just change this to a UK based server. Now NordVPN has a full list of where their servers are at. And uh, like I said, speed test and whatnot is just gonna be a lot of trial and error on your part. And then same deal, control X, yes to save, and then enter for the file name. Next, I'm gonna create the authentication file that that connect script reads. And it's just named auth.txt. Right here, you're just gonna enter the username and password for your VPN provider. However, you're not gonna see mine, but this is the format that you follow. Just username on one line and password on the next. Next up, we need to create an IP table script. So that's gonna be sudo nano iptables.sh. And the IP tables file is this whole bunch of configuration that goes all the way down to right about there. If you copied and pasted properly, it should look something like this. Now, there are two lines that you need to change and they are right down here under make sure you can communicate within your own network. Now, right here uh, under all these pound signs, you just need to change that to what your local network is. So in my case, it's gonna be 10.0.1.0 forward slash 24. And again, your own local network is gonna be different. Most of you are probably gonna be 192.168.1.0 or .0.0 forward slash 24. There's one more thing we need to add before we can actually test the server out, and that's enabling IP forwarding inside of Ubuntu. And that is this line right here. And trust me when I say, if you don't enter this in and forget about it, it can be very frustrating because everything will test perfectly and look perfectly when you're going through diagnostic steps, but the traffic won't actually be forwarding. Ask me how much time I lost on that. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna paste it in. And then hit enter. Now let's go ahead and test this system out. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up another PuTTY session to another Linux VM that I have, but you can use pretty much anything to follow these procedures. So I'm gonna use my Pi-hole server to start out. So that's 10.0.1.8. We're gonna to connect to that. And there we go. 
So over here on the left is my VPN server and over here on the right is my Pi-hole server. To start things off, I'm gonna show you what my public IP address is, or at least part of it, because you really don't need to know that, but enough to know that it will be different once I'm connected to the VPN. So we're gonna type in curl and then ifconfig.me, and that queries that website for my local IP address. And as you can see, it starts with a seven and then ends with 208. Over here on the VPN side, I'm gonna go ahead and run the two different scripts that I need to connect. So that's sudo bash and then iptables.sh. And then I'm gonna run sudo bash connect. Down here at the very bottom of the window, you can see initialization sequence completed. That means we are indeed connected to our VPN. Now, to connect your test system up to your VPN server, you're gonna to need to change the static IP address or at the very least the gateway address in which it connects. So being as this is Linux, I'm gonna go sudo nano etc netplan slash 50 yada 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 dot yaml. So here you can see my IP address for the gateway is 10.0.1.1. We're gonna change that to 10.0.1.15. I'm gonna save that and then sudo netplan apply. Let's go ahead and ping google.com, make sure we're actually connected. Indeed we are. Now to prove we're actually going through the VPN, I'm gonna do curl ifconfig.me. And you can see we're at a 104.128.136.102. That is not my local internet service provider. That is a service provider down in Phoenix, Arizona. And now for the really fun part of this, because what good is a VPN if it fails and you're starting to send traffic through the internet unencrypted? Typically, a lot of the VPN gateway tutorials that I've seen do just that. If your VPN drops off, it continues to forward your traffic through your VPN server, even though it's no longer connected to your VPN. Here, that is not the case. So I'm gonna ping google.com and that will just run and run and run until it can't run anymore. Over here on the VPN side, I'm gonna go ahead and press control C to kill the VPN. And as soon as I do that, you can see we stop pinging over on my test connection. If I relaunch OpenVPN, I have connection again. So how does this work? Why does it work? And is it safe for you to use? Absolutely, let me show you just a little bit more inside of the IP tables file. So this is the IP tables file that I'm using, and I actually found this on an Ubuntu.com forum post, so I will link that down below to give the user that came up with it all of the credit in the world. It was a pretty much a group effort to come up with what actually worked for this sequence. So the key line is right here. IP tables will only allow UDP connections over port 1194. That is the only in-out port that can be used on this server. In fact, if I close out of this and then I try to ping google.com with the VPN not connected, this VPN server doesn't have an internet connection. The only thing that can go in and out is a UDP connection over port 1194. That means if your open VPN connection drops, all of your traffic drops. So now that we know everything is tested and working, let's go ahead and automate the startup process here. Now, in previous versions of Ubuntu, you were able to just add your startup files to the rc.local file. However, inside of Ubuntu 18.04, they changed that and rc.local no longer starts up files on boot. So we're gonna have to re-enable the rc.local service. So first off, we are gonna create a new service in this directory right here. So that is gonna be sudo nano slash etc slash systemd slash system slash rc-local.service. We're gonna copy and paste all of this right here. There we go, control X, yes, and enter. Next, we're gonna create the rc.local script. So that's gonna be sudo nano slash etc slash rc.local. And I'm gonna copy this line right here. Now, the reason I like doing things this way rather than running a cron job is I can always comment these lines out anytime I want to modify or run maintenance on my server without connecting to the VPN. So have internet access without being connected to that VPN. The way I've written the script is I run the IP table script first, then I pause for 10 seconds to make sure the operating system gets all those changes added properly, and then I connect to OpenVPN. Now, these services do run in the background of your server and start up at boot. So we're gonna hit Exit, save, and okay. And the last thing we need to do is set up RC local as a service so it will run on boot. And to do that, we type in sudo systemctl enable rc-local. And you should see created symlink to know that it was successful. And then sudo systemctl start rc-local. And right here, it should pause for about 10 seconds. And that's the pause that's inside of the rc-local script. And if that was successful, I should be able to type in ifconfig 
and you'll see there's a tunnel zero interface that's been created right there. That lets me know I am connected to the VPN. If I can ping google.com, that lets me know I have internet access through that UDP port. And if I type in curlifconfig.me, there is my 104.128.136.102 WAN IP address. And if we go back over to my Pi hole, we can try to ping again, google.com. And one quick note here, remember how I said if you don't enable IP forwarding inside of Ubuntu, it'll come back to bite you and you won't understand why? Well, uh, I completely forgot to add the uh, enable IP forwarding in my RC local script. That is an important line, so that will be fixed in the, uh, the description. Now that that's been re-enabled, uh, if I type in ifconfig over here, you can see that I have a tunnel address right here. On my Pi hole server, I'm gonna go ahead and ping google.com. Now I'm gonna get the ID of the process that's running uh, OpenVPN by typing in PID of OpenVPN, and you can see it's running at process ID 1237. If I type in sudo kill 1237, you can see this is still pinging over here in my pie hole. As soon as I kill it, it stops. That's how we know we're working. And to re-enable it, if I type in sudo bash slash etc slash rc dot local, That'll rerun my uh, connection script. And as soon as we're connected to the VPN, there we go. Pi hole starts pinging again. So there you go, guys. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit more of an involved process than I've ever done before, but I think it's really a beneficial one to have, uh, especially if you have devices that you would like to connect to a VPN that ordinarily are not able to do so. On all of these devices, it is pretty darn simple to add a static IP address on them and allow them to connect through your VPN gateway. Running this VPN gateway allows all of the devices that you would like to remain private, do so. And it allows you to experiment with different regional IP addresses and maybe get access to services you wouldn't normally have access to. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a little bit more of an involved tutorial than I've done before on this channel, but I think it is a great service to run on a home network. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions. I'd be more than happy to address them down below. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you're interested in financially backing the channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon, where a $1 donation gets you access to my exclusive Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. It's another great place to get advice or just simply talk with us. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, all.